My name is Duane. I was born in Manchester and grew up in Bradford. I live my life as a free runner and here is my journey as I conquer my fears. Follow me as me and my friends as we overcome obstacles both personally and professionally. Five years ago now, I came into free running. I uh, started watching it on uh, YouTube and TV. The place where I used to train, it's called a church, not far from me as well. And that's where I like, started before I even knew about the gym or anything. And it was just basic jumps, like just wall to wall. and like, some, There's a few railings as well, you know. Just open, have an open mind down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you down there and show you around down there. So follow me. <laughs> Yeah, even before the um, church. Yeah, this place is like a little homeland for me, you know, just a, like a little training place. But this is where, this is where I started first, you know, like um, round here, just doing a few uh, flips. There's a few bars over there. There's a few walls. It mostly started on that side. Um, getting used to the little jumps and stuff. Back then I didn't know what it was called, you know, so I was just jumping about over the walls, swinging through the trees, like jumping off the, the, um, the balcony and sort of stuff and all sorts. And um, then obviously I did find a gym and then from there I progressed at the gym, didn't I? Then from the gym, as when I was still younger back then, coming back here and then I have more ability to do more stuff around here because I know more. I've been to the gym, I've trained there, so I know more about it. I'm aware of it, more, more of the flips. So over the door, come in, come in, welcome. I got into the whole free running art when I knew the name of it and everything about it when I were about, I think I was about 11. Uh, it was in school, because in, uh, in school, for the whole period of being there, I was getting bullied non-stop. I was getting harassed pinned into corners, shit kicked out of me. But obviously when I figured out what I could do, instead of hurting someone else back and getting involved with the whole beating someone up or bullying someone until their life sh shit, I didn't want to be that. Eventually all I did was I took it all, all that, that had happened, started putting my energy, all the anger and upset into my training. Eventually, I ended up developing uh, like sort of a career out of it. Me, I ended up meeting Dwayne, Nathan, Hooper. Now, originally it was just me, Dwayne, and my brother Jack. Instead of looking for work, I was training. Instead of going out there and trying to make good decisions, I was still training because I always believed that if I gave up on it, I'd technically be giving on part of myself. I've been coaching at the gym for numerous years, been teaching gymnastics and free running. The whole, the whole gymnastics thing came second because, as I said, Irene uh, brought me into it. I've been the manager at Bradford Gym Club about eight years now. My first impression of Dwayne was awesome. He has got so much power and he stands out in a crowd. I met Ryan and Dwayne through the freestyle classes on a Tuesday night. They used to be in over 18 class and that's how Ryan and Dwayne came about. <laughs> I had a few family problems, me and my mother. We don't see eye to eye. Uh, it's been like that for quite a long time. We work better when we're not near each other. So if we were living in the same place, it's either I'd be going out of the window or downstairs, or my mum mom just taking a breather. But um, it's got to the point where it's like I'm not a kid no more, I'm 22 years old. And it's like having my own dependence is one thing that leads to having a better relationship with my mum. 
the relationship with me and my mum, like doing it at first, oh, she felt so uncomfortable at first because obviously it's a dangerous, everything's a dangerous spot, but how I see it in this one, this is it's a little more, more dangerous, you know. It's like, and um, she felt really uncomfortable doing it, but then again, I just carried on, you know. I didn't expect to, myself to be where I am now, but I just carried on with it. And then as it grew, and then I kept showing her, every time I had a video coming out on YouTube, I kept showing her, or any new jumps, I just kept showing her, even though she might feel uncomfortable. And then she just got used to it and used to it, because she knows I'm going to be uh, careful with it, you know. She'll always say, be careful. And I built this brilliant bond with Irene, as I said, she's like my second mum. Through the harshest times to the best of times, she's always been there. Well, I'm here as a shoulder to cry on if ever they have any problems. I'm always willing to listen. So, yes, Ryan would be correct. And I've heard that said by quite a few of the other lads. I am more of a mother figure as well as a coach. So we've uh, come out of the warehouse, around the back to where I live. It's pretty much a, a little abandoned space. and quiet. It's a good getaway spot. It's nice to uh, just have some time to yourself really when you're uh, when you're a bit stressed out or when you just want to train. Normally I just come down here just to get away. It's a nice quiet spot for myself and I can think better. Yeah we should have got a taxi. Just go back into town, meet Ryan then to start training. Yeah bud, the town yeah? Well it's a nice day today was it? Yeah it was a nice day as well yeah. It's quite hot. Well, what, I don't know how many degrees it was, but... Well, it's 9 all day, 10. Is this the best weather to train in? Huh? Is this the best weather to train in? Yeah, it's the best, it's best when it's summer, that's when everybody's out. Well, I'd say most of the is try and get as much clips as they can, you know, try and train as much as they can outside. Um, before it gets back to winter again. Drop in Sheffield, the the gap, the 1940s. It's stupid. It's not something you take lightly. If you get this gap wrong, or even so much as just time it wrong, you take off, you land in. That is it. You're not gonna. You're not gonna recover. Or worse, in worse scenario, you're not gonna live. If you underestimate yourself and you don't judge this this jump at the exact way you can't you can't over jump it you can't under jump it because either way you've got a drop on the other side of the uh, even if you land it but the main thing is this gap i'm always concerned about ryan and Dwayne doing dangerous things outside making jumps bigger of course i am but i think that they are skilled enough and adept enough to know what they're doing so far they've come to no serious harm and fingers crossed that trend will continue. a nine meter day because obviously the roof is doors closed again well the second time I've been here um, it was open so we did everything we did the jump as well so well, well not exactly but the fact of I was gearing up for it prepping doing loads of preps and then I wanted to do it but try not to worry about that too much because obviously I've got London coming now so I'm really ready for that because it's been there's one jump down there I've been wanting to do so many years. 
you know, been looking at it on YouTube and I've been there before, but when I was there, I wasn't ready yet. So now I feel ready. I'm going to do it now. So I feel more confident this time. So basically we're down here in London for the Massive Storm Jam. It's possibly one of the biggest events for the UK for us lot as free runners. And for me personally coming down here it's a massive confidence boost. Obviously seeing all the other free runners and getting to know them and getting obviously getting some ideas and new tips. Oh it's, it's brilliant. I mean probably goes the same for Dwayne really. I'm Alex Lowe's and I'm here for the Storm Free Run session. I was about seven to six or seven when I started doing it. So you've been doing roughly six to seven years? Yeah. And how have you accumulated injuries over this time? I had a ruptured spleen, which was my worst, which stopped me training for about six months. And I was in hospital for about two weeks, and that was my worst one. He's had quite a few injuries in the years that he's done it. He's had a broken arm. Um, he's also ruptured his spleen and ended up in intensive care, um, which was a very scary time for us. And I think if you've got a passion as strong as he's got for something, he sh you shouldn't stop a person from doing it. Um, it is scary, but at the end of the day, you could cross the road and get run over by a bus. So, <laughs> you know, whatever you do, um, there is a scare factor to it in the end of the day. Uh, do some more preps for Double Kong. And then I'm just gonna, after that, just go down there and just gonna go for it. Not long straight away, but just prep some more and go for it. Hi, my name is Pip Anderson. I've been doing parkour free running for 10, 10 and a half years now. I've uh, been a part of Storm uh, just over two years. I've been friends with the guys in the team for a long time. Uh, we were part of Urban Free Flow before, and we've kind of moved, moved on to creating Storm, and I then joined later on. The Double Kong IMAX 2, I, it's one of those things that has scared a lot of people. It's, it's one, of the, one of the biggest kind of iconic moves in this area. So the, the first wall has got slick, uh, slick paint on it, which if your hands are sweaty in any way, kind of slip straight off it, kneecaps into the front of the wall, head over, falling down 16 feet to your face. Not the most pleasurable experience. So I just said, try and, try and do, like with the double Kong, try and do more jump rather than speed, just to make sure that if your hands do slip, you're kind of clearing your legs of the wall, like just making sure that it's a tiny bit safer for him. The further into the sport you get, the, the further you, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're growing in, in what you know about your body and stuff. That's when it starts becoming calculated risk rather than just stupidity. Like I know a lot of people just go, oh, it's stupid guys flipping about is obviously dangerous, but the more you do it, the safer it is. Well, I'm not bombshell. That's what happens when it, you know, all this. But it's worth it. It's worth it though, isn't it? Been waiting like a year to do it because last time I went, I wasn't ready. So this time I did it. But I still just carried on because it just gave me the, um, the oomph just to get it done. How did you feel getting advice from Pip before you did the job? Yeah, the advice was good to be honest. And um, yeah, it was actually, different because obviously I thought at first, obviously with the speed, 
you could get height, but I thought it was more speed because to get over more, but he said try and get your height first on your first walk or something along the lines. But yeah, it was a good race and I took it because the takeoff on the first bit is it's not, it's really it's a hard wall, it's not, it's not good. But I managed to like get over it and try and reach the second wall as much as I can. And yeah, I got it. But even with this one, I knew he could do it, but I still had that gut feeling that it's still too risky. I mean, if he goes backwards, no one's at the bottom to catch him. Or if he goes forwards too soon, there's cars coming along, so there's risk either side going down and across. Or he could undershoot it. So everyone were a bit on edge, because, um, like I said, it's not something to take lightly. Even some of the, uh, the major free runners down London explain that it's, there's only a very few people that have done it. You've all said the same thing, it's the riskiest one ever. God, I'm absolutely stoked that he did it. Because now, obviously, uh, his confidence will just skyrocket like mad, because when you do something like that, it's not something you take lightly. It affects every bit of training you do, and it'll be up on another level. So we've got more big stuff coming. I'm actually tomorrow I'm going to Italy, um, which is a big opportunity, and I'm glad I've taken up the opportunity to go. You know, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's completely different. You know, and um, all expenses are paid for, and obviously I'm perform performing over there for people who are trained with. And yeah, it, it's, it's mind blowing because it's abroad, it's not, you know, over here again. This time, you know, I rely on myself because I'm not with no, no parents, you know, feel myself now. And yeah, it's living on to bigger things now.